first class of Hiroka Institute, uh, intermediate reading class. And so uh, this is the, uh, so there are two levels of uh, intermediate reading. And this is the lower intermediate reading class. Uh, so, uh, and so the text that we have selected for today's class, for the entire course, that is going to be a course for a duration of a month. Uh, it's, called the, it's called the Excellence of Sakya Patita. And uh, the reason why I chose it, uh, two main reasons, is why we, uh, why I chose this book. So the to be a reverberation of the sound. I think I have a mute the mic. So the reason why I chose this particular course uh, is because uh, this is in a format that is known as verse. And in Tibetan, uh, the rules that are for the reading of a verse and a line is quite different. And this comes from the very rule of how to write a verse and how to write uh, a, sent a statement. So therefore, since the rules of writing a statement and a verse is different, therefore the rules of reading also differs accordingly. So uh, because we are uh, starting the lesson with this uh, particular text, which is in the form of verse for the lower intermediate course, we will also understand a little bit about what a verse is in Tibetan, how the verse uh, structures and what are some of the rules pertaining the verse. We may not be talking in depth about uh, the verse in this particular course because uh, that will be uh, a, a topic for a different lesson that we're going to do, which will focus which will focus primarily on verse. So the main focus of this particular lesson is to improve reading. And during our previous uh, course that was provided, uh, we did some reading of lines in story, short stories in Tibetan. And we uh, somewhat uh, went from uh, character reading to a very basic form of combined reading. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to extend this from the combined reading to, uh, to, to a more uh, proficient combined reading. So the rules, uh, so, the, so each class will be like this. Uh, we will be, I will be repeating each line uh, each word, uh, I will be repeating each word combined. Uh, so this time there won't be character reading. It will only be combined reading. So I will be repeating each uh, word four times, each line four times. After which uh, we will be selecting someone random from the uh, from the uh, from the students who will be repeating after me and after that we will uh, go to the english translation and then uh, at the end of the reading each reading session we have new words which will be introduced in each verse and uh, a very brief sort of explanation of the verse will be provided Okay, so uh, 
we begin this uh, particular, we begin the lesson. So both here, as well as uh, the grammar class, which is provided by us, that is Heruka Institute, uh, we begin with verse of dedication. In grammar class, we dedicate to uh, the two deities of wisdom, uh, the, uh, the male incarnate of wisdom, that is Majushri, and the female incarnate of wisdom, that is Saraswati. But here, uh, we, will be, uh, we will be dedicating the verse to the author of this particular text, that is Sakya Pandita. So each verse before the class will be dedicated to Sakya Pandita, different verse each class. So I'll try to write different. So, so today we have this verse and uh, each verse has an English translation, which will be provided after the class in the, in the channel for the particular course. So you can check it uh, in the channel where all the files, materials, and the translation will be provided. The group is primarily for the purpose of asking questions, discussing within, uh, within the students. And if some questions needs to be addressed towards me, then you can ask it in the group. Uh, so, okay, so let us begin today's lesson with this uh, verse of dedication to the Sakya Pandita. Okay, so I will read this once and then I will do a very quick translation in English and then we will begin the lesson. So, uh, the first line, which means that the, the one who, who uh, the one from whom the flow of the excellent speech or the descending of the excellent speech like the stream originates the one who is the master of five major and minor sciences the great pandita the, the king of narrator who narrates the laws of who narrates the discipline and laws of the dharmic and worldly life. I prostrate to the feet of the great Sakya Pandita. So this is the author of the text, Sakya Lekshe, Sakya Pandita Kunga Gense, a very renowned uh, scholar uh, uh, who in his time uh, composed many great poems. Not only that, he was a great scholar, not only in the field of literature, but also a great scholar in the field of, uh, of the Mahayana and Vajrayana uh, texts. Uh, and he also wrote many commentaries to those texts. Okay, so this is a very brief translation. Now uh, we will begin our class today. The reason why each of these portion are colored is to make the reading easy. So each portion that are of the same color belongs to the same word. In Tibetan, we don't have a word reading. It is more based on syllable reading. So each word, Sometimes a word could be a single syllable. Sometimes it could be multiple syllable, depending on the word itself. And sometimes, uh, a, uh, sometimes a word could be a companion word, meaning that even though it may be considered to be one single word, but because of its nature, it is uh, separated as a, uh, as a different syllable. 
So therefore here we see that this entire line is divided into four different colors, meaning that these are divided into four different words. And uh, each word is divided into two syllables for the last one, which is a single syllable. So now this particular verse uh, follows a very, uh, it, it follows a, uh, a very, uh, uh, a very uh, simple pattern. And the pattern is two syllable, two syllable, two syllable, and one syllable. So it is a two, 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 one separation. So in Tibetan, we don't say two to one, we say uh, we say pair and single. So it's a pair, 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 single. And you can see that this verse is written in this pattern where each line is written in pair syllable, a pair of syllable, a pair of syllable, and a single syllable. So it's a pair, 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 and single syllable. So let me just uh, write this here. Mm. So it's a pair, 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 and single. So so uh, a pair in Tibetan is called cha. Cha means a pair. And ya yeah means a single. So the pattern that this particular verse follows is cha 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 ya, which means pair, 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 and single. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about pair, we're talking about syllable. So it follows a single syllable, uh, sorry, a pair of syllable, a pair of syllable, a pair of syllable, and a single syllable. So this is the pattern of this entire verse. So, uh, so now uh, as we begin, uh, this uh, this particular verse has uh, seven syllables, so it's a seven syllable line. So, in uh, while writing uh, while writing verse in Tibetan, we follow this particular pattern, where we have a different syllable. Uh, So uh, I hope that everyone is able to hear me clearly. Uh, so uh, so uh, the rules that pertains to the verse is that, uh, and this is rule that comes from uh, a series of rule. It comes from uh, the rule that was established by uh, the great Indian scholar and poet, uh, He's called the Tanji, and he's the one who composed uh, the structural uh, system of poem, the discipline of poem known as the Kavya Darsa. So in which uh, one rule about the lines is that the lines should be written in syllable verse, in syllable wise. So there is, so here this particular one is seven syllable, Verse, seven syllable line verse. So this is a verse where each of the syllable has, uh, each of the line has seven syllable. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now without going too much in depth uh, on the rules of the uh, verse, let me begin reading this. Okay, so. Uh, Lasso. Okay, so uh, I will begin with the first line. So I will repeat each syllable four times. So I hope that everyone can hear it clearly because the thing is that we emphasize greatly on the pronunciation. Pronunciation is very important. That is the re reason we use the repetition the tradition. It, it's a traditional, it is a traditional uh, way of learning how to read. And it's uh, based on the concept of repetition the more you, uh, it's more like exercising your tongue so that uh, you're capable of not only tongue, because we know that sound is produced by multiple part of the mouth, uh, including your uh, larynx. So, so the first line, 
Okay, so K K K K Pa 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 K Pa K Pa K Pa K Pa Kepa 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 Yun 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 Ten 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 Yunten, 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 Kepa, Yunten, Kepa, Yunten, Kepa, Yunten, Kepa, Yunten, So, 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 Some uh, would pronounce it as Zut where what they do is that they overly exaggerate the sound of ta. So they over pronounce the word ta, making it a super masculine sound. Instead of zu, it becomes zut. So uh, instead of that, one must, uh, what we do is that we actually conclude the sound at the point of zu, zu. And what I have noticed is that it's very similar to the sound of the, uh, the, 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 we have the uh, French word for the egg. E, so, ze, ze. instead of zut, where you strongly pronounce the ta and make it a super masculine sound because of the over pronunciation, you just conclude it before you go towards the transition of Th. So it becomes zu. becomes zu. Zu. Ö. Zu. 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 Zin. 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 Zu. Zin. And uh, another thing, a small clarification, those who are uh, actually thinking that uh, there will be introduction of the characters. Uh, please uh, check the, so we have uh, our uh, YouTube channel where we have the uh, recording of the classes that were given in the past. So we had the class on the basic, con basic reading classes where we introduced each character. So those who are also interested in, uh, in uh, the, pronunciation of each character, you can check it there. So uh, uh, we will send the link in the in the group or the channel. Kepa Yunde Zutin. 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 Pa, 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 pa. Kepa yunde zutin pa. Kepa yunde zutin pa. Kepa yunde zutin pa. Kepa yunde zutin pa. So you notice that here we have broken this entire line in four words. And in seven syllable, so the word 
first word is kepa, then yunte, zhezin, ba. So you, you see that this particular rule that we were talking about, pair, 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 single, actually works here. This is the pattern, pair, 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 single. So kepa, pair, yunte, pair, zhezin, pair, ba, single. Kepa, yunte, zhezin, ba. Kepa, yunte, zhezin, ba. Kepa, yunte, zhezin, ba. Kepa, yunte, zhezin, ba. Now, the second line. Te. 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 Ta. 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 You can sometimes what some people do is they overly pronounce this word also ka and then it becomes tak. Te tak. So instead of that, we try to soften it a little bit. Similar to the case of zu, we do by we do by uh, concluding the sound before it goes, it makes a transition to g. So instead of tak, we make it ta. 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 Te ta. Te ta. Te ta. Te ta. Lek. 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 She. 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 So the same thing also happening here. So whenever we have uh, the sound like ka and ta at the end, instead of transitioning into a more uh, more masculine sound, we just conclude it to be more softer. So instead of shit, it becomes she. Uh, there is actually, uh, in some region, actually, they pronounce this, uh, the impression of which could also be seen in the, uh, the, the, the way people read Tibetan in the regions like Ladakh, where we can see that this impression is still there, where they pronounce the ta more individually. And that is also the case for, and it is also somewhat uh, also true in places of uh, places such as the uh, Arunachal Pradesh of India, where when they read the Tibetan, uh, some of the Tibetan words, uh, they tend to individually uh, pronounce each of the words. So, uh, words such as uh, words such as te, which means rice, becomes pre, and words such as tenzin becomes stanzin because of the individual pronunciation of the words. So when we overly pronounce this, it becomes an individual sound. But here we don't do this. What we do is we conclude the sound instead of shit. It becomes she. 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 Like she. Like she. Like she. Like she. Teta. Like she. Teta. Like she. Teta. Like she. Teta. Like she. Rin. 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 Che. 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 Rin che. Rin che. Rin che. Rin che. Teda lekshi rin che. Teda lekshi rin che. 
대다 넥시 린치 대다 넥시 린치 두두두두 대다 넥시 린치 두 대다 넥시 린치 두 대다 렉시 린치 두 대다 렉시 린치 두 대다 렉시 린치 두 케바 윤데 쯔진 바 대다 렉시 린치 두 케바 윤데 쯔진 바 대다 렉시 린치 두 케바 윤데 쯔진 바 대다 렉시 so this particular word, uh, you can hear two pronunciation. In one where they emphasize on the word na, so instead of rinche, it becomes rinchen, which is also correct. So here there is uh, no restriction on pronouncing the na. So there will be two pronunciation, rinche and rinchen, both of which are correct. So teta nexi rinchen du. Teta nexi rinche du. Teta nexi rinche du. Teta nexi rinchen du. So both of these are correct. So please uh, pronounce it in which way that you may prefer. So there is no restriction here. Kya. 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 Tso. 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 Kya tso. Kya tso. Kya tso. So there is a rule, and this is a rule that is in the uh in the in both the grammatical as well as the uh spoken language, where what you can do is that in some in these cases, in these cases where you see that the first syllable, the word of the first syllable doesn't have a suffix letter, meaning that it doesn't have a, a letter that follows this particular sound. But here we see that there is a letter which is known as the prefix letter here. It comes before this. So sometimes what you can do is that you can take this letter and then you can place it as the suffix of the first syllable. So you can pronounce it as yam so. Yam so. So you can either pronounce it as kya tso or you can pronounce it as kyam tso. And this depends entirely on your preference. So if you think that you can pronounce, you can pronounce it easier by pronouncing it as kya tso, you can pronounce it as kya tso. If you think that you can pronounce it easier with kyam tso, then you can pronounce it as kyam tso. So kya tso, kyam tso. So both of these are correct pronunciation according to the rule. So you can pronounce it in either way. Chen. 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 Chen po, Chen po, Chen po, Chen po, Kya tso, Chen po, Kya tso, Chen po, Kya tso, Chen po, Kya tso, Chen po, Chu, 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 
now please pay attention to this particular sound. So in many cases, uh, what happens is that there is lack of stretching the sound here. Here, there will be a little bit of stretching of the sound. And this is done by this particular structure. So normally it would be wo. But now with the addition of hakikuyi, what happened is that it becomes wo. So you see that there is a certain type of transition in the sound, that it becomes more stretchy, more wavy. And the reason why it becomes more wavy and stretchy is because of this particular structure, akikuyi. It stretches the sound. Not only does it stretch the sound, it somewhat uh, makes the sound more wavy. So instead of chu, it becomes chu. Der. So make sure that this does not become the rolling R, R sound. It should not be the rolling R sound. It should be der and not der. Should be der. 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 So der. Der. Gyatso chempo chu der. Gyatso chempo chu der. Gyatso chempo chu der. Gyatso chempo. So also uh, notice that when I'm pronouncing it individually, the stretching goes a little bit longer. But when I am using it with other words, when I'm associating it with other words in a line, the stretching is a little shorter. So, gyatso chempo chuu der. ケパユンテンツェジンパテタレシェリンチェンドゃそチェンポチュウテルケパユンテンツェジンパテタレシェリンチェンドゃそチェンポチュウテル Gyatso Chempo Chuu Der Yin 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 Chir 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 Yin Chir Yin Chir Yin Chir Yinchir. Yinchir. So make sure that the R sound doesn't become the rolling sound like R. It becomes R. Chir and not Chir. So one should not uh, transition it to the rolling R. Otherwise, it will be pronounced as Chir. And this is the incorrect pronunciation. It should be Chir. 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 So, uh, inchir, 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 chu, 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 wo, 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 wo. So you can notice now, here when there is no akibuyi, the sound is wo. Here, when we have this structure, it becomes so the change is because of this sound. Here, it's 
Chuo. 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 Inchir. Chuo. Inchir. Chuo. Inchir. Chuo. Inchir. Chuo. Tham. 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 Jie. Jie. Notice that the sound stops at a particular sound that's almost like e. So, che, 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 tham che, tham che, tham che, tham che, inchir chuo tham che, inchir chuo tham che. Incher, chuo, tham che. Incher, chuo, tham che. Pop. 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 So the final sound would be p. Pop. 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 Incher, chuo, tham che. 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 Pop. Kepa, yunde, zhuzin, ba. Teda, lekshe, rinche, du. Gyatso, chenpo, chuo, der. Incher, chuo, tham che. Pop. Kepa, yunde, zhuzin, ba. Da lexi rinche du gyatso chempo der inchir chuo tamchi pop ötzin ba teda gyatso chempo chuo der inchir chuo tamchi pop keba yunde ötzin ba teda lexi Rinche du. Yatso chempo chuo der. Inchir chuo tamche pop. So this is the entire verse, the first verse of the first chapter that is called Kepa Tapa, which means examining the wise. So one must also understand about this text. This text is written by Sakya Pentita in the context of uh, explaining the worldly, uh, the worldly tradition, the worldly culture, the, the manners and the ways of, uh, of living in the samsara, but still in a way that one should avoid, uh, in a way that one can avoid uh, a lot of suffering. So it's about the discipline, so there is uh, like, it's always said that no uh, sort of uh, happiness could be achieved without discipline. So these words are all discipline and his uh, oral transmission on how to live a happy life, be it karmic as a practitioner or a worldly person. So each verse can be understood in two different perspectives. Okay, so this is the, uh, I have read it four times, the entire thing. Now uh, we will be uh, choosing someone in random from the class. So let's see how many of us we are. We are 24. So uh, normally what we do is that uh, we choose from any number between one to 10. So uh, today, uh, so before we choose someone, uh, we always ask this, uh, do we have someone who volunteers to read today? Do we have someone who wants to volunteer reading? Who wants to repeat after me? So when I say reading, it means that you have to repeat after me. I will be reading each syllable and you will have to repeat after me as we 
read the syllable. So does anyone wants to repeat after me today? Lasso. So today we will begin with Perry La. Lasso. Lasso. So uh, the first uh, one would be. I was hearing, but I think I heard K. 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 Shit. Ba Chain Rin chen, rin chen. Ta lek she rin chen. Ke 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 ta 
Lakshay and Chen. Come, 
pap inche chupo tamche pap chi inche chupo tamche pap inche chupo tamche pap kepa e zetin pa kepa inche e ying ten cho chin pa kepa lekshe inche du kepa the sound that you have to work on first one is the second one is uh and then final is so these three sounds so there and here you have to work on other than that most of the sound are coming quite well. If you practice again, it will be most wonderful. So please practice uh, this sound. Chir. Chir. And hey. Chir. Chir. And uh, please practice this sound. Other than that, everything is wonderful. So thank you, Perila. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, so uh, you want to try next. So tomorrow, oh, no, sir, uh, next class is on, uh, I think it's on, uh, today is Sunday. So the next class would be on uh, Wednesday. So we have Tintin Huala. So you'll be reading on Wednesday. So, so, okay, now, uh, so uh, we have, will have one person reading uh, in each class. So next class, we have Tintin Huala, who have already volunteered. So thank you. Uh, no problem. So yes, I know that in Dharamshala, the connection is quite bad sometimes, and especially if there's a lot of tourists. And since today is Sunday, so I know that there's a lot of tourists there. So. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Karila, for reading most wonderfully. And uh, so, uh, so, and so now we go with the translation. So the first translation is done by John T. Davenport. So I think this is from the Wisdom publication, if I'm not wrong, but I might be wrong. So uh, this is the translation. And then I have done the take on my own take on the translation, changing some of the words according to my own preference. So it states, the wise who nourishes, the wise who nourish a treasury of good qualities, gather to themselves precious good advice. The great ocean is a treasury of river to which all running waters descend. So we see that by this translation, uh, it, the, the, the verse means that uh, the wise man who nourishes the treasure of good qualities, which is the wise men or the wise themselves. They are the treasury of good qualities. Therefore, we call them wise. And so they gather to themselves all the precious good advice. Whichever good advice they can get, they gather to themselves so that the treasury will always be filled with good qualities. Similarly, the great ocean is a treasury of rivers to which all the running water, all the streams of the, uh, so if there is an ocean, all the streams and river in that vicinity will fall and submit into that ocean and make it even a greater treasury of rivers. So one thing uh, that we understand is that this particular type of verse writing is known as writing the verse by providing example. So the first one, which is the, the word, which is the wise, is compared to the word ocean because of the quality of its vastness, how vast it is, how 
immeasur sometimes uh probably it seems immeasurable boundless how boundless and how vast it is that is the reason why the vice is compared to ocean and then the you and then the good quality uh is uh the good quality is uh here is uh written or compared to the uh chuo which is the uh which is the water so since the ocean has the quality of being vast and limitless in water similarly the vice is limitless in vast and good qualities and the example here to which is the treasury is given here as the word ter which is also treasure or treasury and the da lecture in chintu meaning they themselves collect all the good uh, advice is given as an example of all the river and streams and all the running water submitting descending into the ocean so this seems to be the take of uh, translation here so here i have just changed a little bit it states wise who is the beholder of the world of knowledge the one possesses the world of knowledge gather to them some precious good advice or qualities meaning that the wise even though they are the beholder of the world of knowledge they won't say that oh now i have learned so much i don't need anything i don't need to learn anything what they will do that even the smallest and the um, smallest of all the knowledge that could be achieved they will most preciously try to gain that knowledge despite of what knowledge it is whom they are getting this knowledge from they will they will consider that knowledge to be very precious like the uh like the like the uh, wish fulfilling gem they will always go in search of that knowledge and similarly even though the ocean so here we are trying to take the take the perspective by using the personification so here even the great ocean which is the treasury of water mean that it has so much water it never it never stops the stream from descending into it it welcomes every every drop of water that comes into it and so it becomes boundless it becomes it becomes boundless and it becomes the treasury of water that is immeasurable so this is the take that i have uh, taken this is my perspective of this particular verse so this was translated by me and this was translated uh, from the book uh, which uh, which 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 has translated the sakelikshe and this is the original text okay so what are the words that we have here the first word is kepa what does kepa means kepa means wise or a scholar someone who is wise or a scholar someone who is proficient in some sort of uh, uh, some sort of skill is known as the wise so with great experience someone who is with with attain a great experience and great genius in certain type of trait is known as the wise so the sentence that i have made from the word keba keba kangsar song na ko which means the wise is welcome wherever wise goes meaning that if a wise man goes to his unknown land because of the because of the quality of the wise man everyone welcomes the wise man saying that please come please come so kepa kansar songna ko ko means is needed or is necessary so they are welcome because they are needed and they are necessary wherever they go because of their great qualities so kepa wise or scholar uh so uh second one is you and then which means good quality you and then means good quality you and then kun kishima lama san which means the kind lama the kind lama is the foundation of all good qualities lama meaning guru so kind guru or kind lama is the foundation of all good qualities is the one from where all the good qualities originates from where the foundation of all good qualities within us arises so the sentence you and then kun kishima lama san to which means vault or treasury 
So, Gilbert Pongzu now to sing Chematapur, a dart to you. Gilbert Pongzu now to sing Chematar to you. The gold and silver is like sand in the treasury of the king, mm -hmm. meaning that there are so many gold and silver in the treasury of king that it is like the sand in there, meaning there is so many. There is uh, so many gold and silver in the treasury of the king. So treasury or vault of the king. So uh Lekshe means excellent speech. Lekshe means excellent speech. Kebe Lekshe Lumpu Koamin. Kebe Lekshe Lumpu Koamin. Which means the excellent speech of the wise is unheard to the fool. Meaning that the fool will never be there where the uh, wise will speak of his excellent speech. Either avoid it or will not accept it. So the excellent speech of the wise is unheard to the fool. Rinche means precious. Rinche means precious. Something valuable, something very precious. Simje rumbochele rinche chishi yu. What is more precious than the precious sentient beings? So, what is there more precious in the samsara than the precious sentient being? There is nothing that is more precious than the sentient being in the samsara than the sentient being themselves. No materialistic thing, nothing. So, here, yeah, uh, it means that the most precious thing in the samsara is precious sentient being. Gyatso. Ocean. Gyatso is ocean. Shite gyatso ni gyatso cheshu yin. Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean. Chembo. Great. Lama chembo. Chembo gungi. Chembo yin. The great. The great. Uh, this is. This is the great. Lama is the greatest of all the greats. So the great Lama is the greatest of all the greats. This is written in a more poet. This particular line was written in more poetic sense. Chuo, stream, water bodies. It is either stream or water bodies, river, any water body. chuo. There are many streams flowing from Tibet to India. Reverse of streams flowing from Tibet to India. Der, treasure or treasury. The precious mountain is the treasury of precious treasures. There are many precious treasures that comes from the precious mountain. The gold, silver, other type of precious metal, and minerals. Pup means to descend, to fall. Fall only in the case of rain and snow. If it's like river, stream, it's always descend. If it's like rain and snow, if you associate this word with water, like chuo, it becomes descent. If you associate this with the word snow, or rain like charpa and kang, charpa and kang, then it will be to fall. There was a lot of snowfall today because it is associated with the word kang, which means snow. It doesn't mean descent, it means to fall. So, there was a lot of snowfall today. And so, with this, we're done with the first. Uh, so there, there are actually stories related to each verse. Like there is some sort of stories, like example stories. Uh, with each verse, we are not going to discuss those. We will discuss those uh, specifically when we will primarily study this text, which we will do in very later classes. But this particular text would be our focus of study. In this particular course for one month, we are not uh, focusing on this text as a focus of study, we're just using it as a material to learn how to read. So therefore, we will not dive in depth in each of these.
but I'll try to provide as much information as possible by staying in relevance with the uh, lesson. Okay, so uh, till this, we are done with this verse. Okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions regarding the meaning of the words if they have not understood? I will answer that. Uh, we will have, I will have two questions. So if anyone has questions, please ask away. Does anyone have questions regarding the meaning of the words? Genla, I have a question about uh, original poetry. So, uh, as as an ordinary, I uh, have a cloud of question, but I have a, one special that irrigating me. It concerning the last line. Yes. Uh, here we have yin and chir together. And uh, it's give me an idea to other words have a meaning of being. For example, uh, yin chir, yo chir, duk chir, shuk chir, chi chir, lak chir, and so on. Uh, is it possible or not? Thank you. Yes. So like you said, uh, yin chir uh, here, since it is associated yeah. with yin, right? Uh, it gives an understanding of being or even though it is. So in my perspective, I have understood it as even though it is, even though it's not uh, translated in that way, it is giving a meaning that even though it is chir as giving reason. But in this translation, it is understood as being. And so yin chir is understood in this way. But yes, as you said, uh, yue chir, Chir, chi chir. Chi chir becomes a very different case because yin and duk both are confirmational particles, meaning they both confirm that something is there. So being or giving reason for why it is like this, that is possible. But then when we come to words such as chi, which is an interrogative particle, then it becomes why is it so? Chi chir chuo tam pa means why is it so that... No, sorry, sorry. I mean, mao cha ki kuchi sa chi, the chi. Mao cha ki kuchi sa chi. Mao cha ki kuchi sa chi, the chi. Chi chi. Mao cha ki kuchi. Mao cha ki kuchi the chi. Not interrogative word. The word concerning being. Uh, which which word did you say? Mao. Mao cha ki kuchi sa chi. Mao cha ki kuchi sa chi, chi chir. Chi chir. Mm. Not possible. It's not possible because the combination, okay. uh, because the combination of the words you said, mao cha ki kuchi. This is, uh, this is actually uh, not possible in the first case because mm -hmm. it is cha. So these four don't go together. So uh, I think uh, this is this is this has to be with the non-existence of the word. So mocha ki kuchi sa chi. So you're sure that the prefix letter is ma. Uh, uh, okay. Can I say gauna uh, sa nature? Gauna sa nature. Nature means nature. Say nature, no, but then, something like for existence of yes. something. But now, what happened is that when you say nature, meaning that chir becomes a reasoning why it exists. Because uh, this, this 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 reason result for to that uh, something exists now. Yes. Being in some place. That, yes. But uh, you must understand that. In is a conformational particle and it is also a verb, right? Right. And ne is not a conformational particle, but it is a verb. So both of these somewhat have a different uh, type of uh, influence to the word chir. Nature means 
what is it require for it to exist? But hinchir doesn't mean that. Hinchir means being so or even though it is. So you see that when we translate it, there is a difference influence over the uh, companion word chir. When we use nature, inchir, yu chir. So it has to do with the fact that in, yu, uk are both verb and conformational particle, but ne is not a conformational particle, but just a simple verb. And so it has a different uh, influence over the companion word chir. And you can so in the same in the same way, bao cha a che cannot be used in this way. Bao cha cha. Bao cha a che cha. Bao cha cha, right? Right. Cannot be used. Cha cha means cha, as we know, is used in the word tam cha, right? Right. So it is a verb, not a conformational particle, so it will have a different influence. Meaning that chir will always go for reason in those cases. Okay. Yes. So, any more questions on this? Uh, so, yes, uh, we will not discuss about the difference between the uh, classical and contemporary poetry. This is not the focus of uh, our uh, study, so it will be too much extra information. So, yes. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, more questions? Does anyone? One have more questions? If anyone have questions, otherwise we'll go to the uh, words of dedication, and then that will be it for today. So, if anyone has questions regarding the meaning of the word, or like uh, the questions about these particles, chir or hin, anything that is. Uh, Arising doubt, you may ask question. Uh, homework. Okay, homework would be making sentence. So, uh, if you're able to make sentence, make sentence for the words. If you're not able to make sentence, recite, recite this verse again and again, uh, so that your reading will improve. Yes, definitely. You can send me the recording of your audio, and when I will, I will try to answer to them by giving feedback by sending recording of the audio by myself. That's all. So, uh, so if any one of you have any questions that you haven't asked here, you can ask in the group. I will answer it there, and if I have haven't uh, attended to the question in one, two days, please have little patience with me and I will get to them uh, as soon as possible. So no questions, it seems. Then I will go directly to the uh, verse of dedication. So this is the verse of dedication that is dedicated towards the Manjushri. So I will briefly translate it and the translation with the same file will be available in the channel along with the recording of today's class. So uh, those who want to send me audio, you can send me uh, directly uh, or you can send in the group. Those who want to send me questions, you can send me directly or in the group or you can save the question for next class and ask it during the next class also. 
that is also possible. Less so. So, uh, and so, uh, let me read this verse of dedication. Kevati Prabhu Sanjana Chambeshara Kyapa Rabbine Shara Vishik Agula Rabbine Shara Chimun and Kyapasha. So, by the uh, by the merits, by the power of these uh, merits that accumulated, may all the sentient beings uh, be able to achieve the great uh, achieve the great state of the king of wisdom, Manjushri, and may all of them have the wisdom of Manjushri within them, and may all of them uh, be able to uh, attain uh, the pure land of Nirmala, of the Manjushri. That's so. Thank you very much. And so, with this, we're done with today's class. Uh, those who have questions, please ask them in the group or directly to me. Those who wants to send me the recording, send it to me. Uh, I will record the audio of the first verse and send it uh, in the channel tomorrow, so you can listen to it again and again and practice. So, most importantly, uh, practice again, uh, recite again read again, listen to the class again, and is, if there are questions, ask the questions. I always welcome the questions most wonderfully. So thank you very much to everyone who have participated in today's class. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And thank you for those who have asked the question. Thank you very much. It helps everyone when you ask questions because sometimes they may have the doubt, but are not able to ask. So thank you very much for the questions asked. And I will see every one of you, those who will be joining, I will see every one of you on Wednesday when we have already Benson uh, uh, who have volunteered to read on Wednesday. So recite and listen to the audio. Those who are joining me for the grammar class, I will see you tomorrow. Those who are joining me for the reading class, I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you very much. And Tashi Dele, and thank you.